pretty obvious, right? Who agree that innovation now is merging okay, with the traditional automotive? Good. And so I moved there. And uh, this is what's happening right now. Okay, so we are, uh, the ownership model is kind of shaking. Margins are getting lower and lower. It's very hard to sell complete vehicles, new vehicles to new generations. Because they don't care much about owning the latest generation car. They care more about owning the latest iPhone. Okay. And services like car sharing, ride sharing, like Uber, Lyft, Didi, even food delivery, okay, everything now is on demand. With an app, you can have a personal driver, you can get food, you can get your, your packages okay, at home easily. Also, we are shifting to, we are heading toward uh, a more a green, sustainable future of transportation, integrated, thanks to players like Tesla, and it's so damn sexy. I also would like to mention new players like Faraday Future, Lucid, Neo. Unfortunately, just putting batteries in our vehicles is not enough. It's not enough because we have to change the way we manufacture, design, engineer, produce vehicles, recycle vehicles. That's an impressive image from The Economist. From Germany, just in 2015, actually, so two years ago. And I want to play a little game with you. In Italy, we have a very successful car sharing owned by the biggest energy company. They are using fancy Italian designed cars, red. And usually, in the ownership mode, they last easily seven, ten years. Try to guess, under heavy usage, how many years this fleet of vehicle lasts. Who says five years? Raise your hand. Okay, one. <laughs> what about four years? Okay. Three years? Okay, more hands. What about two years? Okay. I had a very interesting meeting with them, and actually they told me, and that's a reliable source actually, that it lasts less than two years. And that's terrible. So basically, they are buying thousands of vehicles, and after less than two years, they throw it away and buy a new thousands of vehicles. So very unsustainable financially, okay, and also environmentally. And the government is pushing them to, to provide a service. Also, everyone now are pushing new technologies in the, in the vehicle. <laughs> and uh, technologies like connected car solutions, autonomous features, gliders, whatever. But the actual cars are not really welcoming them, as you can see from this picture. In Italy, we call this Albero di Natale, which means Christmas tree. <laughs> it's quite similar in a way. In the Silicon Valley, most of the companies call them like lamps on wheels. So, we have to change our way of thinking, how we design vehicles, how we engineer, how we produce, recycle, upgrade. And that's the second topic, how the car of the, of the future should be. Actually, uh, we collected a lot of data. That's the white combinator approach. We interviewed all our potential customers and customers, also tier one suppliers, car manufacturers. And the car of the future should be, that's a data-driven approach, obviously green, using batteries, electric powertrain, if possible, using energy from renewable sources like solar farms. If possible, also, easy to repair and easy to upgrade. 
and I will tell you more about it. The car of the future should be also designed and engineered for services. Because people are caring more now, instead of owning a vehicle in a big city like Tokyo, San Francisco. So expensive, and also it's very hard to find a parking in big cities, okay? People care more to have a very reliable service, like Uber, that in less than two minutes a driver is there, taking you from A to B. And most of the time they don't even care about the brand of the vehicle or the design of the vehicle. They care more about the experience. So we have to focus more on this part. And the car of the future is going to have more and more connectivity, computing power, okay? And I love this illustration from Fortune. It's uh, the Silicon Valley goes to Detroit, and they pictured it, the car of the future, like a smartphone. I like this concept, but I think it's not very correct. In fact, modular smartphones are, uh, are quite a flop, actually. And also the form factor of the vehicles and a very compact device like a smartphone. I think there is not a real uh, comparison. Instead, we have a vision more similar to Intel. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the resolution is not that good. But it's like a computer on four wheels. Actually, this is a very interesting tweet from Intel that says just a few weeks ago, that the future has no cars, just supercomputers on wheels. And we totally agree on this. Because the car of the future should be more focused on services. It's a big object. And potentially, you want to, you want to have these vehicles running for several years. So you can replace parts easily, just like a PC, desktop, or workstation, or a server. You can change the GPU replace it, or even upgrade it, okay? Obviously, the form factor should be more like a vehicle. And also, it's very important to empower services, to have a better uh, visibility of the service. So this could be a ride-sharing car. This could be a vehicle for delivery or an autonomous vehicle for food delivery. And the last topic is how we can get there. What are the solutions? First of all, we have to change our mindset. Instead of a vertical and close approach, to a more horizontal and open. So we have to first make some parts in open source, okay? especially the code, some part of the hardware. The objective here is to reduce the R&D time. Because in Silicon Valley and also in other parts of the world, like in Japan, companies are spending a lot of effort, time, money from investors in doing reverse engineering, trying to adapt their hardware stack in the vehicle and running their own code. So we have to provide better documentations in order to reduce the time, uh, the R&D time, the reverse engineering close to zero if possible, and help companies to provide modules, like connected car modules, self driving modules, that can be seamlessly integrated in new vehicles faster. Another important thing, so this concept again is more similar to a desktop PC, a workstation, obviously with a better form factor. And the second main thing that we need to really embrace is the modularity. Modularity also for the exterior body. So with companies that are providing services like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, 
they can easily customize the exterior body, okay, without making the again from scratch the wrong legal certification. Instead, we can make extension of it. And also, especially, it's very important exterior modularity to accommodate new technologies like this. We have to avoid the Christmas tree or labs on wheels. Instead, we should have a better approach for a sleek and seamlessly integrated design. Like this. Obviously, it's very, very important to have the modularity also for key components, like the electric motor, the battery pack, even the chassis. In, in case of a heavy accident, you can replace some parts. And you're not throwing away what works. This is the only way to solve the financial impact and environmental impact of services. And we are going to talk about it also at the G7 in Italy in June. And modularity in the interiors. Okay? So in the mid-long term, we want to replace and put a better drive-by-wire solutions better sensors inside the vehicle, better computing powers, okay? In case of services, also you want to change some parts, imaging seats, okay? Unrest, even tables, okay? After heavy usage, you want to replace it, okay? Instead of throwing away and buying new vehicles again. And in the mid-long term, also when the regulations are ready for it, also to, re to remove the steering wheel to take the front seat and flip it to have a vis-a-vis -vis layout. So you can write your email, you can work on your slides, you can do your conference, you can watch a movie, okay, in the level five autonomy scenario. The bad news is that no car, no car manufacturers are doing this. Instead, most of the services are using vehicles designed and engineered for ownership in their services. The good news is that we are doing it. <laughs> so again, it's not only putting batteries in the vehicle. We have to think about modularity. We have to design and engineer cars for services to allow easy repairability and upgradability. Not only fancy over-the-air upgrade via software, also hardware. So potentially, vehicles that are using our technology can last 10 times more. Fleets of vehicles instead of two years can last up to 20 years. And the business model is very interesting because we're not pushing companies to buy more cars. Instead, we are providing them services to replace parts. That's why tier one suppliers loves us. And this is a video that shows our latest product called Edit. Introducing the future of the automotive industry. A ready-to-use road legal vehicle designed and engineered in Italy featuring a platform that is entirely modular, allowing vehicles to adapt to any situation, any location, any need. A truly adaptable vehicle, designed and engineered for services. The modular platform allows for truly future-proofed vehicles, ready to easily repair, refurbish, and upgrade any part necessary with flexibility to choose even up to level five complete autonomous driving. A fleet of self-driving, truly white label vehicles can operate up to 24 hours every day, allowing for maximum efficiency. And because the entire platform is built on a modular architecture, fleets of vehicles can last 10 times longer, customizable, modular, and upgradable, designed to last, designed to evolve. Do you like the video? <laughs> Thank you.
So that's all. If you want to know more, feel free to contact me. That's my email. Thank you. So thank you, Tim, for that. That was great. Okay, so that uh, concludes our keynotes for today. Um, we'll be uh, breaking for lunch. And uh, if you need any assistance with restaurant choices, uh, please stop by the registration desk uh, on the third floor at the foyer. Uh, they have restaurant maps there to assist you. Uh, the breakout sessions will begin after lunch at 2 p.m. So enjoy Automotive Linux uh, Summit and uh, welcome. Thank you.